Hey guys, AJ here. Since over the past week or so, I pretty much ran out of new characters to show you. In this video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be guiding you through the Spiral Abyss and give you all the latest information that we have in the Chinese open beta right now. I'll tell you everything you need to know, what you have to do, what you can get out of it, some tips and tricks, and then I'll show you some actual gameplay later on. Okay, first things first, where is the Spiral Abyss? As you can see here on my map, it's located down in the bottom right corner over here. If you just play through the story, you'll get to this cape down here at some point during Act 1. Once you're at this cape, there will be a portal. You take that portal and you'll be teleported right over to this island. All you have to do then is you walk up to this gate, you press F, and then you basically unlocked the Spiral Abyss. So, what is the Spiral Abyss? It basically offers you different stages that you need to clear consecutively to be able to proceed to the next stage. By progressing through these stages, you unlock certain rewards with every stage that you manage to clear. These stages quickly go up in difficulty the further you get, so with every completed stage, the next one is going to be much more challenging and rewards are going to be better. That is the basic concept. In Genshin Impact, these stages are called floors. There are actually two parts to the Spiral Abyss, the first part being floors 1 to 8 that you can see here, also called the Abyssal Corridor, and then everything that's beyond that, so floors 9 plus, and those are called the Abyssal Moon Spire. Um, these two are quite different in some aspects, and I'll get into those differences. But for now, all you need to know is that you can only access the Abyssal Moon Spire once you have cleared all of the first eight floors. So let's just focus on those for now. Now, let's say you want to go ahead and begin clearing your floors. You start at floor one, and you'll see that each floor is further divided into three chambers, mini stages, so to say, that also need to be cleared in succession to complete the entire floor. Whenever you attempt to clear any one floor, and the term they're using in the game for that is challenge, so whenever you challenge any one floor, you will always start at chamber one. Even if you've already cleared chambers one and two previously, and you only have chamber three left to clear, let's say, you cannot just jump straight into chamber three. You gotta start at one, then two, and then proceed to three. The reason they force you to do that is to make it much more challenging, because there are a few unique rules to the Spiral Abyss. One of them being that you cannot use any types of food. That means you can't use any of your stockpiled apples or chickens to heal your party members. The health of your party members also doesn't regenerate between each chamber, so the HP that you have at the end of chamber 1 is what you're going to start with in chamber 2, and the same goes for the third stage. This is why some people recommend rolling for a character with good healing capabilities early on, because you can't use your food in every type of content. You also cannot switch around characters, gear, or level up and ascend characters during a challenge. Each floor has its own unique gimmick that you can check here. This basically incentivizes you to form your party a certain way, by buffing or nerfing your team or the enemies, sometimes both, and these modifications come in all shapes and forms and are something you should consider when selecting the members for your team. Every floor also comes with nine additional challenges, three per chamber, indicated by these abyssal stars. In order to collect these stars, you're required to beat the chamber under certain additional conditions with increasing difficulty. So, for example, if we go to floor one, chamber one, you can see that in order to get all three stars for this chamber, you would have to clear it before your timer falls below 210 seconds. You have to collect at least 6 out of 9 stars per floor to be able to proceed to the next floor. So it is not enough to just clear each chamber, you also have to pay attention to these stars and make sure that you get enough. There's also something called the Abyssal Blessing that is basically a permanent buff that assists you in battle. This blessing varies every month and provides a wide range of different buffs. And if you want to check which buffs are active right now, you can go up here to the blessing of the Abyssal Moon and you'll get all the info you need. 
These buffs are quite impactful, so it's recommended to check them in advance because it will likely have an effect on your playstyle. The last thing you'll need to know about floor mechanics is that at the beginning of every chamber you are offered three buffs of which you can choose one that will help you out during battle. These buffs have different durations, some are active only for that one chamber, others are active for the entire floor. Floor wide buffs are usually weaker, but you'll benefit from them even in the following chambers. Whereas chamber only buffs are usually stronger but will disappear after you clear that one stage. There is a variety of different buffs and it is completely random which buffs you are offered when you enter a chamber. But you can play around with these different buff types and let's say you are hunting for stars and you've got three stars in chamber one already but only two in stage two. You could start a new challenge, pick a floor wide buff in chamber one and then a chamber only buff in chamber two to give you the biggest possible total buff for that one stage. Then you get your three stars there, you quit your current challenge and you start all over. This time you pick floor white buffs in stages 1 and 2 and then a chamber only buff in chamber 3 to give you the highest chance to three star that one too. Now let's talk about the rewards. What can you actually get out of this content? You get rewards for every chamber that you manage to clear. You can check what kind of rewards you're going to be getting up here at the top where it says Rewards Preview. Most notable out of these are the artifact chests. Some of these stages reward you not only with 3 and 4 star but even 5 star artifacts which is obviously pretty good. But that's not all, you can also get Primo Gems. If you go down here, each floor has this little chest icon. You can click on that and you'll see that for every 3 stars that you collect on that floor, you'll be rewarded with 100 Primal Gems for a total of 300 max per floor. Across 8 floors that's 2400 Primos, which translates into 15 pulls, which is not bad. Now the big thing here is though, that all of these rewards, both up here and the Primos, as of the current Chinese Open Beta, are one-time only rewards. In the closed betas in the past they had it set up so that all of this content here reset every two weeks and you could basically get your rewards two times per month. What they did with the current open beta is they ramped up the rewards you're given but they made it one time only. However what they also did is introduce this second part I mentioned earlier, the Abyssal Moon Spire. And this part of the Spiral Abyss does actually reset every two weeks and here you can repeatedly grind for rewards twice a month including Primo Gems. I'm not sure about the exact number of Primos that you can farm per cycle but I'll put that in the description or somewhere once I get the final information on that. So what that means is that on the one hand you don't have to worry about rushing any of these 8 floors because their rewards aren't going anywhere. They don't reset and you're not missing out on anything. On the other hand, unless you clear floor 8 chamber 3 at least once, you will not be able to access the repeatable content that is locked behind this abyssal moon spire. That basically leaves you with two ways of handling this problem. One is to go hardcore and grind your ass off to get to floors 9 plus as soon as possible so that you don't miss out on any of the repeatable primal gem rewards. The other approach would be to take it slow because the amount of time and effort you'd have to put in to get up to this level in just one or two weeks would be so insane that it's just not worth the time and the stress. If you're a casual player, you probably won't be challenging Floor 8 until at least a month into the game anyway. From Floor 5 onwards, for example, you actually have to designate two teams per floor because they're going to be split into a first and a second half and you can't bring the same units in both teams. That means you'll need up to 8 somewhat usable, somewhat leveled up, decently geared units to clear floors 5 and beyond. So for the normal person it's going to take a while. To briefly summarize, floors 1 to 8, the Abyssal Corridor, are one time only content. You have to clear each floor at least once to be able to access the Abyssal Moon Spire. You don't have to worry about 3 starring everything right off the bat because your rewards aren't going anywhere. All you have to do is get enough stars per floor to get to each next floor. 
once you've unlocked the Abyssal Moonspire, it will stay unlocked forever. So you will always have access to that. And then you can go ahead and farm the floors in the Abyssal Moonspire. Those floors do reset every two weeks on the 1st and the 16th of every month. And the rewards you're going to be getting there will also reset. And I think that is it for the info part of this video. I shared everything with you that I found out over the past couple of days. And for the last few minutes, I'll just roll some actual gameplay footage for you to get a taste of the Spiral Abyss itself. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Genshin Impact content. And thank you for watching. Let's go. 